Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper back at you with another Ableton Live video tutorial. And I'm gonna show you how to do external sidechain routing for your third-party VSTs the right way. As you can see here, I've got SoftTube's FET compressor and there's an external sidechain right here. And as soon as I go above zero, you'll see that external has been activated. And every plugin kind of does this differently. Some just automatically accept the source and switch to external sidechain mode. And other ones you have to switch it on. It's all pretty much going to be the same way. If you have a plugin that accepts external sidechain, this is the best way to do it. So I've got the external sidechain on the hip hop sub bass here. If I go ahead and play what I'm working with, it's just an example of how to use this thing. So it's nothing <laughs> impressive at all. So essentially what I want to do is duck this sub using the external sidechain in the FET compressor and I want to use the sidechain source as this kick. Now before I was just duplicating the kick and then sending this kick into the track and now it's going to be duck. You can hear how it's ducking right there, but now I have two tracks and it's kind of like I just label this one ghost and then if I change this up here, I'd have to change it down here in the ghost and that's a kind of a pain in the ass, right? So there's a way better way to do it and the way to do it is using a return track. So what I'm gonna do is right click, insert a return track and then I'm gonna send the audio from this kick using the send, 100% boom. And if I let that play now, we're getting a doubling up essentially. We're hearing the audio from the kick and the audio from the return, but if I go into the return and now instead of sending that audio to the master, I send it to the hip hop sub, which has that compressor on it, you'll see that it's automatically selected it. Now I'm only getting the audio kick from that audio kick channel and this return track, while it's accepting that audio and returning it, it's returning it into that FET compressor. So if I click back, boom, now I'm getting that side chain from that return track. And the really, really cool thing is if I make any edits now to this, it's gonna get automatically updated because it's just getting fed into the return track and I don't need to edit two things. I can just edit this one thing and boom, the compressor is getting side chain to whatever pattern I make here inside of it. And it's just a much quicker, smoother, and less convoluted way, like I said before, to get your external side chain going on. And what's really, really cool is if I want to use that for multiple sources, I can do it two ways. I can either add a second return track and again, send it to it, and then I can add that return track to a different device if I wanted to. Or let's say I wanted to side chain both of these, what I can do is right click, group tracks, and then take that FET compressor, drop it on the group, come into the return track and just make sure it's selected on the group. And again, it's gonna select it. And now both of those tracks are gonna be side chained. Go ahead and unsolo them. Boom, now both of those tracks are being side chained by this kick through the return track. So this is a much better way and I'm kind of kicking myself that I've been using Ableton Live for so long and I've just been kind of lazy because I knew a good way to do it and I've been using it but I wasn't like, how can I do this better? And big ups to that user on YouTube, I forgot your name, I'll leave your name on the blog post. This is a much better way to do it. I just don't, there's no way around it. So I appreciate the heads up. There might be a better way but as of right now, this is the best way to do external side chaining for third party plugins inside of Ableton Live. Anyway, I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Peace.